Um, so uh, this is Drupal 8 blocks who knew, um, or Drupal 8 blocks who needs panels, or Drupal 7 blocks grrr. <laughs> um, so my name's Ted Bowman. I'm Ted Bow on Drupal.org. I work at Acquia for the office of the CTO. So Dries is the CTO. So um, I get to work on cool Drupal 8 core stuff, like uh, some of the stuff that he demoed this morning, the settings tray, um, so the outside end concept in general, um, uh, the REST module, the water wheel, the Drupal part of the water wheel module, which is a JavaScript library. So I worked on the Drupal integration of that. Uh, I've worked on contrib modules in the past, entity forms, scheduled updates is a new one I have. On Twitter, I'm <coughs> everywhere else, I'm Ted Bow. Uh, so who are you? So if it was a smaller presentation, I would just ask everybody to come up and say hi. But generally, how many people are new to Drupal completely? Okay. How many people have started to work on Drupal 8 yet? Okay, I guess it'd be easier. How many people have not started to work on Drupal 8 yet? Okay, so most people have. Okay, all right. So Drupal 7 blocks. Why did we need more? So basically, why was core blocks not enough for, um, for most of us for Drupal 7? So Drupal 7 blocks, one, were not features friendly. So I'm gonna go through a quick list of the things that I think are the pain points and we're gonna look at them individually and then how Drupal 8 solves that, those problems. Um, Drupal 8 or Drupal 8 plus Drupal 8 contrib. So just uh, sort of to note on this presentation, I'm, not, I'm gonna sort of delve on what you can do with Drupal 8 core blocks and just a little bit more as opposed to the larger ecosystems of modules that might exist. Um, but we'll talk about those too. Um, so they weren't features friendly. They weren't really easy to export with features. Um, each block could only be placed once. Um, there were limited visibility conditions. Uh, blocks were not fieldable without a whole bunch of other modules. Um, go wrong direction. Uh, and not everything was a block. And the blocks admin screen, for me, caused, wasn't, I felt like it was hard to manage a really complex site just with the blocks admin screen. Um, so for most complex sites, a lot of people would use panels or context, or, and or context, I guess, like sometimes people use both. Um, so caveat for me, I was really in the panels camp, so I, this may be an American thing, but that's Mr. Kool-Aid, so I drank the Kool-Aid uh, which means, you know, I was really into panels uh, for Drupal 7. I found, so panels was super powerful, tons of installs, crazy configurable, but, you know, it was really complex and it had a steep learning curve. And it was really complex, even I think just with panels itself. And there were a lot of great modules in the panels ecosystem that added more functionality, but, you know, the more you added, the sort of harder it got to understand. Um, like I said, I drank the Kool-Aid. I, you know, I liked it, but um, it was, I also used to be a Drupal trainer, and it was sort of hard to explain what was going on in panels. Um, so this is just the configuration of Drupal 7 panels, I think with just maybe one or two other panels modules um, installed. So Drupal's uh, 7 context was powerful. Some might say super powerful. Um, I kind of actually came to context later on in the Drupal 7 cycle. Um, I came to really like its simplicity. I think for most people, for placing blocks, it was easier to understand because um, it was closer to the core block system. Um, so this is just the screen for placing blocks via context. Uh, so Drupal 7 blocks, so why did we need panels and context? Let's look at the individual problems. So not features friendly, so Really, you want to be able to do configuration in Drupal, commit it to Git, move it from dev stage to production. Um, in Drupal 7, if you didn't have some, the features extra module, or I think there was a blocks features module, if you didn't have one of those modules, at least for most of the Drupal 7 cycle, it may have been improved later on, um, you couldn't easily export your blocks. So you might have to set them up locally and then actually set them on, on production, which is, if you're considering them, your configuration is not the best practice and not ideal. Um, so Drupal 8 blocks are configuration entities. They're really easy exportable. So this kind of piggybacks on 
a lot of what I'm going to say that's good about Drupal 8 blocks is how the block system is kind of piggybacking on a whole lot of other changes in Drupal 8. So the configuration management system, in this case, so blocks are configuration entities. They're really too easy to export, um, very Git friendly, and you have one file per block. So let's look what that looks like. This is a screenshot of a directory with configuration. And I'm just looking here at the block. So it's probably hard to read, but we have block dot block bartik search block dot blotic bartik bartik tools. Um, so each one of these is an individual um, block placement. And so for me, right away, this is I like this better because in features you would have multiple block configurations if you had the block features extra module in one file, and it's a lot easier to have git merge conflicts when you're doing it that way. Um, this is an individual uh, block configuration file. So it's a YAML file. It's uh, pretty easy to read. So if we look at this, it says theme seven, region header. So it's really easy for me to just look and have an idea uh, what this block configuration placement is actually doing. So I'm gonna show a real quick screencast of me basically um, going and making a change to a block, committing it to Git, and then, uh, or actually looking at the differences and then committing it to Git. So under this scenario here, I have my configuration directory under my Git repo, so I can immediately see what changes are there. So uh, first, I'm just going out there and I'm saying, what's my Git status? So I wanna see, oh, my status is clean, meaning uh, I don't have any configuration out there that I haven't committed to Git yet. And let's just assume in this example, I've exported all the other changes in configuration that I've made now, and I'm coming and I wanna update something about my site, in this case, where a block is placed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my site, I'm going to edit this block, and I'm gonna go down to the bottom, and I'm just going to switch the region to sidebar first from sidebar second. I save it, I confirm, yes, it shows up over there, we're all great. So now I go back to my terminal and I do drush configure export sync. So basically I'm saying uh, export my current site configuration to the sync directory, uh, which is a, I think the default directory name for Drupal 8 configuration. Um, once I do that, it's actually gonna ask me, it's like, hey, there's one file that has changed. And if it said something like, um, I don't know, con uh, con uh, node content type article, I would say, hey, something went really wrong there. But I see, oh, no, it says block, block, Bartik search. Just the name is gonna tell me like, oh, it's reasonable what just happened. So I'm going to export it. And immediately, I can actually just do a git status here. And I can say, what's going on in my file system? And I can say, oh, there's one changed file in my file system, same one that they mentioned above. If I actually want to see what that difference is, I can just do a git diff. And again, since I only have one, it's just gonna show me the one file. It's gonna say eliminated the line region second sidebar, and then it added the line region uh, sidebar first. So it's really easy for me to tell in Git to sort of in my mind, yes, this is what I did, it seems reasonable. I felt like for features, you know, I love features for Drupal, well, I loved and hate, hated features for Drupal 7, depending on the day. Yeah, but I mean, it was, it made things, it made things possible that wasn't possible without it. But the Git differences when you're doing stuff like that were not as clean as just like, okay, I can really see just one small line changed. Um, the other important part is because it's not in one big file, if somebody else made a change to another block and then we're merging those things in, uh, it's, we're not gonna have any kind of merge conflict unless they edited the, the same block and really the same line even, which is, you know, it could happen but not as likely. Um, and then I would just do a git commit message and say, hey, I, you know, obviously you're probably gonna have more changes than just that, but I'm just gonna say, well, I move the search block, I'm gonna misspell it here, and then, you know, then I'm good to go. We're not gonna get into the whole product, the workflow for getting it up there, but basically, you know, I could push those changes up, other developers can pull them down, 
and then we could pull them down from production. Um, okay. So we're going to have questions later on, but if anybody had any particular question on the workflow, that type of workflow. So we'll go over more later. Um, all right. Okay, so another problem with Drupal 7 blocks where there's really limited visibility settings. So if you ever use panels, you could, um, for panels variants, you could use a lot of different conditions to say when should this variant take, uh, be used. And then for each individual thing you placed in panels, you could also have visibility settings that were really complex to say, this should show, only show up for anonymous users. Or this should only show up if the node I'm looking at is an article. So Drupal 7 core, though, in the block form, had very limited visibility settings. I could say on a certain content type. I could say for a certain roles. Um, I could say on certain paths, but not, not much more than that. But Drupal, and that you know, made us sad. But Drupal 8 um, has also limited visibility settings. So, you know, what is going on here? Why do we have the same limited visibility settings in Drupal core? Actually, Drupal 8 has unlimited visibility settings. So this is also Drupal 8, and you can see over on the left, we have a whole bunch of different conditions that we can apply to that block. So what is happening here? This is both Drupal core, one with very limited visibility settings, and one with sort of unlimited visibility settings. So w what's going on? So what we're looking at here with tons of visibility settings is actually Drupal core and C tools. So C tools provides condition plugins. And actually, the reason C tools provides condition plugins is because panels needs condition plugins in Drupal 8. So instead of putting those condition plugins in panels itself, it puts it in C tools and then uh, panels depends on C tools. So that's a really, uh, and then other modules like rules would also do that too. So in Drupal 8, visibility settings are just condition plugins. And then C tools will make the condition plugins, but then core automatically gets them because C, uh, condition plugins are sort of a generic thing in Drupal 8. So in Drupal 7, uh, context had condition uh, visibility settings, panels had uh, visibility settings, and other, and then rules had conditions. So all of those in Drupal 7 were totally separate things. In Drupal 8, they all implement a con uh, condition plugin. So if you make it for one module, another part will automatically get it. So the fact that Ctools provides these, even though they were thinking, well, we're making these for panels, even if you don't install panels, you still get that um, added bonus. Oh, I was going to start the timer. Sort of remind me at 15 till. Yeah. yeah. How much time do we have left now? Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, and if none of the condition plugins that uh, any contrib module or core provides is good enough for you, condition plugins are basically in one class. And this is pretty much the logic you would need. I think this is for checking if it's a particular content type. But you basically just have to implement uh, the plugin, then overwrite the evaluate um, method. And you could put any kind of logic you want in here to basically, if you had very special business logic, it's really easy to write your own condition plugins. Um, so another problem with Drupal 7 is Drupal 7 blocks were not fieldable. Caveat without beans or boxes or fieldable panel panes or any number of modules I may have forgotten. But anyways, basically there were solutions, but they didn't come with uh, in core. And also uh, it was kind of a divergent solution in Drupal 7 ecosystem. So it wasn't like everybody was using the same thing. There was not like a consolidation of effort around that. So sad. So Drupal 8 blocks are fieldable. We have custom block types, which are similar to content types for nodes. And we can have different fields for type. And we can have a custom block library that we can reuse. So this is an example of different types. We have a basic block, which basically is just text and a, um, 
a title and text, and then we have a map block, which is basically just a simple map field on a block, and a user promoter block, which is just an entity reference to a user. So they just use all standard fields. Any field that you could put on a node, you can put on a block. Um, so this is our block library in that case, where I have one block that's a map of New Jersey, one is a uh, user of the month block, and then one is a map of Princeton. Uh, so example here with the left top block is the user of the month block. Einstein is the user of the month. And then down at the bottom we have a map block that just has a, you enter a location and it renders a map. So the fact that we're using standard fields basically means you kind of have unlimited block types in Drupal core, depending on what you have installed for fields for contrib. Um, the other problem is blocks in Drupal 7 could only be placed once. So if I made a view of, um, also sad. So if I made a view and I wanted to put it in a block but show it sometimes on the right and sometimes on the left, I would actually have to make two versions of that view if I did not have panels or context installed. Um, in Drupal 8, you can have different configuration settings um, in each placement of the block and then also different visibility settings. So an example would here is maybe on articles, the user of the month shows up over on the right in the second sidebar, but in the uh, pages maybe it shows up on the left. So it's just placing the block twice and using different visibility settings. Um, another problem with Drupal 7 blocks is they, not everything was a block. So everything in green here in Drupal 7, and I actually had to install Drupal 7 to do this, I hadn't done that in a while. Uh, I actually had to install it because I forgot what wasn't a block. So just for this presentation. Uh, so everything here is a block that's in green, but all this stuff, the tabs, the branding, the menu up on the right, um, the page title itself, wasn't actually a block. Whereas in Drupal 8, everything is a block. Pretty much everything, like the toolbar up top is not a block. Get a good picture. <laughs> Uh, I, I made one. I made one mistake in making this slide. There's a green line around the whole thing. That's not true. That's not a block. But um, and actually, I missed one block there. But this is a block. This is a block. The tabs are a block. The site branding's a block. That menu's a block. So all the benefits as far as like placing blocks. Maybe you don't want the menu to show up on certain routes or whatever. Uh, maybe you want the site branding block to show the logo on some. Uh, some pages and not the logo in other places. Stuff you could eat. So I think in, in Drupal 7 there was uh, panels everywhere so that it could take over the whole page. We kind of get a lot of the same benefit of that in Drupal core. Um, so basically the bar tick out of the box is going to just make everything a block and if you kind of follow that pattern with other themes you can kind of make every, everything on your page easily configurable. Um, so we get to the admin screen. So this is the admin screen for Drupal 7. So one of the problems I always had with the um, admin screen is if I have a particular block that I'm looking at and I have say 20 blocks on the block screen, if I look at any individual block, I have no idea when it's going to show up because it's likely going to have visibility settings, but I can't look at the page and just know, uh, you know where that particular block is going to show up or that one or that one, or that one. So it gets really confusing. So part of, um, part of the problem in Drupal 7 and why panels and context was so great, it's not only what you could do, but like how you could manage it. Um, you could technically still do a ton with just core blocks in Drupal 7. It just became really hard to manage after you had more than just a real small number of blocks. Um, so I think that. So you love this screen? This is the great, you know, everybody use this, Drupal 7? <laughs> I didn't personally. Okay, so that was sort of, that screen made me feel, I want to put a caveat that, yeah, th there's an expression like the thing you hate somebody like put their heart and soul into. So I'll get to why I think, you know, one of the biggest problems in, Dru in Drupal 7 and why this screen was a problem, not necessarily because how it was made. Uh, so Drupal 8, um, you do have a bit of differences. You have this place block where you can easily just say, um, 
you know, I want to place a block in this region. And this actually came from a usability study that they did where people didn't understand. Uh, basically, when you placed a block at the very bottom was the actual region you put it in. And there wasn't a length per region to say, I want to place it in this region. So it was conceptually, it was hard for, for beginners to remember where they were placing it. And you had to go into the demo screen to see the regions and then come back and remember the names. Um, so now you can just place a block, then you give a little search screen here, you search for the block you want. Um, but the Drupal admin screen does have this problem of where do any of these individual blocks show up? So that problem wasn't solved yet. So if you look at all this and you're just like, I don't, I don't, I have to click each one to configure like, where does this, oh, this one shows up on pages only. Oh, this one shows up on articles if the user is logged in. But as a management, uh, that is really kind of, you know, still that part kind of makes me go, err. So we need a hero. Um, so caveat, I wrote this module. Um, so this is block visibility groups. And basically, it sticks with the core blocks page, but just makes it a little bit better. Um, lets you manage blocks and groups. So an example would be, I want to manage all the blocks on articles together, all blocks on pages. Maybe I want to manage all the home page for anonymous users and then the home page for authenticated users. Um, so on the blocks page, it just adds um, some conditions up top and it says, okay, you're currently on the blocks page, but we're only showing you blocks for, uh, what is the example here? Node bundle is article and the user is a member of authenticated user. So any blocks that you add in here will automatically only show up for them. And then also you can only see those blocks. So it makes it a little bit easier. So basically, we're looking at the group article for authenticated user, and then we see our conditions here. We can add new conditions. So instead of when does this block show up, when does this block show up, I know when all these blocks show up just by the fact that I set the conditions and then I place blocks individually based on those conditions. Uh, and it also makes it easy to later on say, I want to, maybe it was for anonymous, I made a group for anonymous users. And then maybe actually I want to add a role new users. So anonymous users and new users should see the same block. I can easily go and just add the condition in one place and then it works for all the blocks in that group. Um, so these example of visibility settings are articles for authenticated, basic pages, home page for anonymous, home page for logged in. Um, but what is Drupal 7's single biggest problem with blocks? Any ideas? So in my mind, the biggest problem is they were made in 2011 and they were frozen. So basically, you couldn't get new features into core blocks. So uh, came out in 2011, we knew there were some, you know, we knew we wanted to make it better. So then you make it better in contrib space. And everybody starts working on Drupal 8. Um, we no longer have that problem. Um, so Drupal 8, we have semantic versioning. Uh, Dries talked a little bit about this, this today. So basically it means we can put new features as long as they don't break backwards compatibility in 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5. We have experimental modules, which means we can get those modules in and they don't have to be perfect and we can iterate over them a lot faster. Um, and also we have regular releases. So 8.2 is gonna come out next week. 8.1 came out, I think, six months ago. But we have regular six month releases. So we can add the experimental modules in and then we can, I think it's like a year to get them to stable. Um, so Drupal 8.x, so the best may actually yet to, to become for the block system in core. Um, Drupal 8.2 was very good for blocks, or will be very good for blocks. I guess it's out there for you to test right now, but uh, it re hopefully gets released next week. Um, so warning, what I'm gonna show you is experimental modules in Drupal 8.2. Um, they're experimental in that we don't guarantee backwards compatibility. So that's in the Drupal community. Um, between releases, between 8.1 and 8.2, you can't break backwards compatibility, except if they're experimental because you get a warning. Hey, this is an experimental module. This may not act the same way. It may not work perfect. Um, but I think definitely they are ready to test. And that's, we, you know, we need feedback to see how does this work? Does, is this what 
you would expect. Um, how can we do it better? So let's look at in Drupal 8.1 and 8.0, the current way to place a block. So I go to structure, block layout, and then I go and I pick a region. I hit, actually first I'm going to demo the regions because I don't know what they are because I'm new. Uh, I want to put it in the second sidebar. I'm going to go back. And actually, I just had to hit the back button because I couldn't figure out how to get back. <laughs> um, and I'm going to pick my region. I'm going to place it in there. I get to search for my blocks, which is great. Powered by Drupal, right? I'm going to save it, no conditions. And I'm now to go back to the site. And I look at it. It's like, oh, it's there. Cool. So um, not super hard, but also not super intuitive if you're new to Drupal. If, if you've been using Drupal for a while, it's probably like, no big deal. I know how to do this. Um, so let's look at the way with the place block module. Let me go back into my. So this lets you place blocks from any page. You don't need to go back to the admin pages. It's great for beginners, and I think it's also like a click saver for any of us who've been around for a while, too. So let's look at how you place blocks in 8.2 with the experimental module. And hopefully, 8.3 or 8.4, this will just be like the way you place blocks. Oops, no. Get me my mouse. OK, we're going to have to go out of the screen for a second. OK. So we go up to the top to place blocks. All of our regions now have these little um, uh, plus mark, uh, plus signs, so we can just say add the block here. You don't need to understand this is the second sidebar. You just need to say this is where I want the block. Um, again, you search like before, search for the block. You place the block. No conditions, I'll just save it. And boom, it just shows up. So I never had to leave really besides the modal, and we can get rid of the modal soon. Um, I never had to leave the front page of my site, and I see the change right away. Um, so another experimental module is, my time, four forty five. Okay, is the ex settings tray. So if you've read any blog posts of Dries this recently, he may have referred to it as the outside in module. I'm sorry, I named it that. It wasn't, you know, it's probably not a very good name for it. So now it's called the settings tray module. It's a, again, experimental module coming in 8.2. And there should be a YouTube video there. Oh, no, there's not. Uh, so it enhances the edit mode that you get with Quick Edit, or it kind of piggybacks off that. And it quickly lets you edit existing blocks on the page. And and it lets you edit the related configuration. Basically, we're trying to give you easy access to the stuff you actually want to change. So imagine that you are a beginner, or image you are a beginner, um, and you just installed Drupal. <laughs> I actually fixed it up top but forgot to fix it. Yeah, that's all right. OK, you go to the home page. And you want to change the site name. So let's look at this. So I click configure block. I go back to the back. And can I change the site name back there? No, I cannot change the site name. So for some reason, I have to go in and out of presentation mode. So as a new user, I might be thinking, where is the site name? I clicked on the thing that had the site name, and I wanted to change it. But it took me back to block configuration. Now, as an experienced Drupaler, you may go, yeah, because it's a different thing. But we're sort of thinking of, as you're new, you don't know that there's a block placement thing that's different from the site name. You just know that you clicked near the site name because you wanted to change the site name. OK, so let's look at how you could do it with a settings tray. Uh, you click on the title. Update the title. OK. So I go here, and I click here, and I do a quick edit. And it comes over on the right. Oh, this is a menu one. Uh, wrong video. Same idea, though. I'm clicking on 
a menu, and I want to change the menu. I may have reordered my uh, reordered my ones. Yeah, and so basically here, I want to I want to enable new menu items. Maybe I want to change the title, and this actually gives you an example of gives you an example of have wanting to do two things. I want to change the the label for a particular block, and I want to change something about the menu. Now, on the back end, those are two separate things, the placement of the block and the configuration of the menu. But conceptually, you know, that's maybe one thing to a new user. So um, let's actually look at something. This also could possibly be the experience for adding blocks in 8.3 or 8.4, actually adding or editing multiple blocks. So I say I have the article content type, and I want to place the fields of the blocks in different places. So I'm going to click over here. I'm going to look for the author of the node, authored by and place. I'm given here because this is actually C tools, adds uh, blocks per field. I'm going to say I want to show the author as a formatter of an entity, and I want to show the article view of the entity. And this slider here is. <laughs> So this is, this is basically the settings tray being used with block place. So this is the idea that we could start to use the setting trays for a lot more stuff. But you see, we haven't actually done that. I just have a site that I've converted everything to the settings tray. So we save this, and it automatically shows up over here. Now I want to place a block. I want to place the image for the article over on the right. I'm going to click here, search for the image field, click it. Choose the formatter for the image. Uh, solve the scroll problem. <laughs> I didn't want to edit out the masking of Sunday guy. I figured you could handle it. Um, and then finally, I'm going to go and I'm going to add the tags down at the bottom. So you can see here where you get to have a very sort of panels-like experience of just grabbing fields and putting them in different places. This is only with, the only thing you actually, this would just take the two new experimental modules in Drupal 8.2 and then C tools. They wouldn't open up in the tray, place, place block would open up in the, in the top, but um, you start to get that experience. And then I'm going to skip putting the, the tags in, let me jump here. And then if I didn't make all the settings correctly, I could actually go in and say I want to change this image to use a different style. I could just do a quick edit, opens up on the right. I want to use the thumbnail, and I save it. So all of this without actually you know, going back to the admin screen. So, <laughs> so this is basically place block, settings tray, and C tools. But easily, like I said, the worst thing about Drupal 7 blocks is they were frozen in 2011, but now, you know, we've already added two new kind of cool additions to the block, actually not in the block module, but to deal with blocks, and we could start to add more. If people think, actually, a field for every block is great, then we could add that if we want to. But basically, the idea is we can add new cool stuff as we go along. So other related blocks, I'm actually going to go through this part kind of quick. Um, field is block, which actually probably I would recommend C tools instead of this module at this point, but it basically adds a block for each field. Um, let's get through that quickly. But the other thing that's really great about this, though, that C tools and this module uh, both benefit from, is every, so many more things are fields in Drupal 8 than they were in Drupal 7. So publish status, authored by title, all of that is fields in Drupal 8 where they weren't necessarily in Drupal 7. So modules had to do special logic, say, if they wanted to expose all those things as like a, a field block. In Drupal 8, basically all they have to do is, I want to expose all fields as blocks. You get so much more than the same module would have got in Drupal 7. Um, C tools adds extra views and blocks configuration, or configuration in views blocks. It gets you closer to views content panes. If people have used that in panels, um, actually it was part of C tools, but usually it was used with panels. Um, 
it gets you closer to that just with regular views blocked in Drupal 8. Uh, again, it gives you the one field per block. It gives you block UI improvements, and it gives you the extra conditions. So if you're trying to stick with core blocks and you're like, I don't want to deal with panels yet or uh, other block-related modules, I would recommend installing CTools and see what improvements it has. Um, so let's just go through those. Um, so to the modules that I'm saying you might not need, uh, panels is still great. I, you know, I probably would use panels eventually if I was making Drupal 8 sites soon. Um, it's at beta 4 right now. It's over 3,000 Drupal 8 sites. And, but it might not be needed for a lot of sites where you did need it in Drupal 7. So I'm not saying don't use panels. It's just for me, if I was making it, I would consider site by site whether I would actually need it. Um, context, I think, is a work in progress and or stalled. Last time I checked, all, the slides will be out there, but if anybody's interested, they could go to this node and see what the latest progress is. Um, there was work on GitHub, but I, I, I checked this week and I, don't, I didn't see any, um, uh, any progress. Um, so conclusion, core blocks are better in Drupal 8. Just out of the box, as soon as you install Drupal, you get a lot more benefits. Um, Core blocks plus contrib, you know, really become something I, bordering on awesome, I would think. Um, but also, the, obviously, there's going to be more contrib goodness. I think one of the things that really makes this different um, than in Drupal 7 is the fact that we have so many underlying systems that we thought about in the Drupal 8 uh, development process. And one good example is conditions, is panels, rules, and context all had these conditions something should happen in a certain condition. But they all were separate systems. So if somebody made a condition plugin for context, nobody in rules or panels or the block system got the benefit of that. Now, because um, we have unified that, if you make a contrib module that adds a new condition, core blocks gets it, rules gets it, panels gets it. So you can use it in so many more places. Um, also, the thing that I think is eight, great about Drupal 8 blocks is we can add more stuff and we can experiment a lot faster so that the block system that I've shown you now for Drupal 8 and why I think it's awesome, may, there may be you know, reasons I, I can't even think of that now that might make core Drupal 8 blocks so much better in a year or something like that. Uh, all right, so questions? Hey Ted, thanks. Um, so if I if I go in and I enable these experimental modules, um, place my blocks, yeah. do a bunch of work, and then for whatever reason I have to yank out these experimental yeah. modules, do my settings stick? Yes. So I okay. I'm glad somebody else brought this up because I did not want to bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> I personally think that the two modules that made it into 8.2. They're usable, but you know they're experimental for sure. But if you're using them locally on a local environment, not on production, but you do local development, they do not save unless, and again, they're experimental, unless we really mess up, they're not saving how blocks are saved. So you can just turn them off, and on production, the, the settings should stick. Caveat, they're experimental. But I think, yeah, you could do that. Caveat, experimental. <laughs> um, you know, because we may change these modules. Um, I'm only actually involved in um, outside in. I'm not, or the settings tray. I, I wasn't really involved in um, place block. But, you know, those could be changed and it would break. So, what it would really break is it would break any module that tried to integrate with them. Like, do not, well, if you expect to write a module that integrates with place block or settings tray right now, realize that you will have to update your stuff as we break them. But potentially, you could use them to place blocks and then turn them off and you'd be fine. Caveat, experimental. Yeah, so, but yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that is definitely something that would be awesome and I think should be. So you get into a lot of problems of, like, you would want to, like, do the change to the menu and see it happening over here. Yeah. 
that we should figure out a way to do that. That basically is the direction that we want to go in. There's a lot of technical problems to that because you would have to basically, you know, go to the server, render it, re-render it. The way it is now, you'd have to go to the server, render it, replace that part. I think one thing that could potentially, um, yeah, I guess also like not just questions. I wanted questions and ideas since, you know, Drupal 8 is evolving. If people have other ideas they want to talk about for improvements, we can make the core blocks. But one thing that along your lines that could make the experience a little bit better is the refresh list module. How many people have seen that? I think he demoed it. But the idea is you click the page, and instead of it reloading, it only reloads the parts that it wants. So if refresh list got into core, where if somebody actually somebody could actually write this as a contrib module against settings tray, you could actually save, um, have the settings tray save it, and you could use refresh list to only update what needed to be updated. And it's the, the tricky part is if I have a menu block over here, and I open it up and I change the menu settings and I save it, there's no guarantee that's the only place on the site on the current page we're using the menu. Um, but refresh list gets by that by saying. Uh, basically, goes to the server and says, with our new cache tag system, says, tell me the regions that need to be updated because of cache tag invalidation. And it just magically figures it out, um, and it will send you back the, only the regions that need to be updated, and they'll be updated in place. So if that was in core, we could really make a great experience with saving the blocks and it just automatically looks like it updates everywhere. Well, it would update everywhere. So that, that would be awesome. The refresh list module is like something that's, I think, on the line to get into core. But um, you know, that's not to say somebody couldn't actually experiment it with it in contrib. You could basically do what I'm talking about in contrib right now. Yeah, if anybody had time. And you could check with me. I could show you how to do it. Any other questions, ideas, problems with that we can improve Drupal 8 blocks? That's that's perfect. Like you, no other feature requests. <laughs> I have a lot of time to work on Drupal 8 blocks. If anybody has other ideas, <laughs> uh, well, especially in Drupal 7. Yeah. Bean allows yeah. you to give content managers the ability to manage their blocks more easily. Uh huh. Without the giving them a global access to block management. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a problem we're confronted with regularly on Drupal 7 usually yeah. if if they want to be able to manage a single block we have to tell them not to touch any of the other blocks. So potentially uh, so potentially you could do that now if you had a module like I don't know what the content like the access modules are in contrib and Drupal Eight, but potentially, you could get a contrib module that says that allows you to have different access for different entity types, and you could show them a list of their blocks, and they could actually change. So anything you could do, say for nodes, since nodes, well, that's not true, but potentially there might be a contrib module that lets you do fine grain uh, access control on entities. You could use that because custom blocks now are just entities. But that would only work for custom blocks, not like the branding block or a menu block and stuff like that. But if you were dealing strictly with custom blocks, um, a, a generic um, entity access module might be able to handle that. Would that integrate with the, the settings tray? GUI effects, so the, the ability to... I think right now page. we are actually checking... Uh, I'd have to check. I, we may be actually checking for blocks administration so one idea would be maybe the permission for outs for the setting tray on a block should not be blocks administration. It could be the access to update that particular entity. Um, we haven't thought about it in that way, but that, yeah. But usually it would be the same unless you had a contrib module that changed that. But that might be a reason to actually check the block instead instead of the permission because the contrib module could change that permission. Yeah. Any other? Thoughts, questions, how this works? Yeah. Um, I did a lot of things in block tray. Yeah. But uh, I do a lot of contrib version. Uh -huh. And I've got a big request for plugins. So maybe it's more about getting the settings tray to be more uh, easy to block and then you're not talking to them. 
Yeah. 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 They're looking for already on that page. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm supposed to be reviewing questions. Or, or go to the mic, yeah. Uh, so the question is about the blocks layout page because uh, I think it's much improved, especially for those of us who who know Drupal. But for people who are are new, sometimes they come people come to that page and are confused um, when they don't see things that are obvious yeah. that they expect to be there, um, like new blocks. Uh, especially when you're enabling a new module, let's say the local the the multilingual modules, yeah. you enable them and then you don't see the language switcher. Yeah. Be nice to have uh, like a prompt. Yeah. So. So sort of a backstory on why this has changed between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. So the whole idea in Drupal 8 where you can place a single block multiple times kind of relieves the need for that part at the bottom of a Drupal 7 module where you say these are all your disabled blocks. Because really those were one-off things. You didn't have them twice. Whereas in Drupal 8, a single block we place multiple times, so it doesn't make sense to say this one particular one is disabled. But um, yeah. Um, when, once you hit the place block, whether it's in the, in the new stuff or the existing one, you get a list, but like you said, you don't know that that list is there, right, unless you click it. Do you have ideas, Kevin? So, yeah, the, 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 the um, sort of the North Star designs that we're working towards um, with, with, with these modules is that you'll be able to place blocks from the settings tray as well, so that um, we want the user to not have to go to that, the, especially the new user, the person who's unfamiliar with Drupal, to be able to click um, a link to the place blocks link and then to have the blocks show up and then also do things like automatically filter the list of blocks to blocks that have either been recently updated or updated by that particular user um, so that, you know, so that those things are, are, are coming to the surface and that people get like you say, the, the people have an expectation that they want to get the block that they that that was just added or that was just updated or that they worked on themselves, um, and and immediately add that thing and also be able to see it, be able to see a preview of it, and then and then and then add it. And that's those are sort of enhancements that we're that we're not seeing yet. But like Ted said, we have lots of things that we can add because we have semantic versioning and we have experimental modules. So look for more of those things to be coming soon. And then also, I was going to mention um, things like um, so. Ted showed the um, the way that you can create these visibility groups for blocks. We'd like to see visibility groups for blocks on the front end as well. So I could say, for example, you know, show me this page under this particular um, context uh, yeah. of a, of a user or of a you know uh, you know of uh, of something in the URL, et cetera. So. One other thing about that idea is um, one benefit, again, of other changes in Drupal 8 that are sort of making things easier to do in Drupal, easier than they were in Drupal 7, is since blocks are configuration entities, you could potentially make a view now yourself and make a link in that view to place the block. So you can make a view of blocks and say, I want to place this block. So without too much work, a contrib module could um, have a link that says available blocks, opens up in the settings tray, and says, here are your available blocks, and each one would have a place block link. So, um, or you could just have it to where they have a separate page they would go to that they know that these are all the blocks, and it would take you to just place them. So the fact that they're config, config entities, and no, that's not right. Sorry. They won't work with views. Sorry, take that back. I don't think <laughs> anybody else. You can't list we'll config entities in views. Yeah, you can't do that. No, never mind. You could do it. In, you could do it in code really easily, but you can't do it with views. So you actually a contrib module could really easily say list blocks that under a certain condition, and you know give the user a page to list those, or maybe open them up on the side if the user is logged in or something like that. Um, but yeah, can't do it with views. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, ultimately the goal is to not have a user now have to go to that page. Yeah, yeah. Just to be able to see them on the page. Yeah, I think the I, the hope of the place block module is that you new users wouldn't have to go to the block layout page as much, um, so they would just see the link to place a block, and at that point they're immediately given the list, um, so they're not on the block page looking for a list. They're just um, 
or I guess you place your block, pick your region, and immediately you're given a list, immediately after one step. But region or the blocks you want are obviously the most important things in that, in that process. Any other question, ideas for what could be better in core blocks? Yes. Okay, yeah, so the question was, we looked at the field as block thing. Can you get the entity reference? Yeah, so anything that is on, uh, so caveat, you can put something on like an article page that's a field for something else and it won't show up. But if you manage it correctly, yeah, you can say, this uh, node has an entity reference to another node or to a user. That's just a 